This is a brief introduction to specific energy graphs for open channel flow. We've previously seen there are three energy terms that make up the total head for any open channel flow. We have the kinetic energy based on the velocity, potential energy based on the elevation z, and the pressure energy or work that can be done through the depth of the water. That is, h, our total head, is z plus y plus v squared over 2g. Now for many analyses, we're interested in the local energy that's referenced to the channel bottom. That is, the flow is not changing the local z, unless we're actually considering erosion and deposition, a more advanced topic. So the local flow behavior behavior is governed by the velocity and the depth. And we can define then a specific energy. We'll use E for this. E is defined as the depth plus V squared over 2G. That is it's the depth energy, the depth head, plus the velocity head. Note that the term specific energy here doesn't have any relationship to specific gravity or specific weight or any of the other specifics that are often thrown around in physics and engineering. The total head, then, is simply z plus e. Now let's take a look at our specific energy and use our term q equals va, that is the flow rate is the velocity times the cross-sectional area. If we do this, then we can write the specific energy as y plus q squared over 2g a squared. Now again, we can take a look at our A, and if we use the rectangular channel approximation, the area is the breadth times the depth. So we can write this as Q squared over 2G V squared Y squared. Yeah, a little complicated still. So let's think about this Q squared over V squared, and we're going to define a small Q as a flow per unit width, that is Q over B. We then end up with this equation that's a little bit simpler to look at. The importance of this equation is that we can see for a fixed Q, as the depth increases, the kinetic energy term, that is the term on, second term on the right-hand side, becomes less important. Conversely, as Y gets smaller, the depth term becomes less important, and the kinetic energy term becomes more important. This allows us to think about how the specific energy can change at a location. So let's now look at a graph of how the specific energy as a function of the depth might look for some fixed Q. That is, we're going to graph E as a function of Y. First, we want to think about what happens as y gets very small. As y gets small, e must go off to infinity. So we can draw this first curve as shown in the red line here. Now, let's think about what happens as y gets large. As y gets large, we see that the second term on the right-hand side goes to zero, so we get the equation E equals Y for very large Y. That means if we can draw a line here that is E equals to Y, we know that as Y gets large, E will never cross that line. And it must approach it asymptotically. So our graph of E as a function of Y has these two lines, and it must connect smoothly between them. There's no place for a singularity in this equation. So we get typical graph of specific energy versus depth that looks like this. Now, notice here the minimum specific energy occurs at what we call a critical point. The critical point is where d e d y is equal to zero. That is, we have simply where the curve reaches its minimum value. So we can find this point. We take the derivative of E, where that is equal to zero, we'll have the critical depth. That 
is we'll call this y sub c, and it can be obtained from this equation. It's simply the derivative of e with respect to y equal to 0. If we solve that for y sub c, we get this equation. So this gives us our critical depth for a specific energy curve. Now the critical depth turns out to be where the Froude number is exactly equal to 1. Now you should be able to prove this for a rectangular channel, channel using the Froude number definition. That is, the Froude number is the velocity over the square root of g1. And you'll need the critical depth definition from the specific energy graph from the previous slide. That is, the critical depth is q squared. Here where q is the flow per unit breadth, Now in hydraulics, we usually turn the specific energy graph on its side. That is, we're going to put it in this form, which is not e as a function of y, but y as a function of e, which can be a little bit confusing because that makes y double valued for different values of e. But this keeps it with our intuition of depth being something that we put on a vertical axis. Now we still have here our critical point where the Froude number is equal to 1 and where the critical point we could draw through that the critical depth line. Above the critical depth line any flow condition is called subcritical. That is the Froude number will be less than 1. These flows are deep and relatively slow. Most of the energy for the specific energy is bound up in the depth of the For flows at depths less than the critical depth, the flow is supercritical. That is, the Froude number is greater than 1, and most of the specific energy is bound up in the velocity term rather than in the depth. And this is the end of specific energy graphs for open channel flow.